to our channel. Welcome to In the Kitchen with CCK. I am your host. I'm Coach Chef Kim. So it's spooky season. It's one of our favorite times of the year. And I'm super, super excited to bring this really fun Kids in the Kitchen treat for you to be able to make with your kids this weekend. So this weekend, we are hosting Halloween parties with these guys. Now, both of these are up on the blog currently at CoachChefKim.com. In addition, we gave away an entire spooky season ebook to all of our subscribers. So make sure you are subscribed so that you too can download our ebook. Now let's get into how we did it. So for this one, everything that we need was up on the screen, but it's also on the website. So we're gonna do black candy melts. I melted them in the chocolate inside of the bag, okay? So you're gonna do this in 30 second increments. And then every 30 seconds, you're going to grab your bag and you're going to mash it until your chocolate is fully melted. Once you do that, you will then pour the chocolate over into your mold. Now, you see, I didn't like overfill it. I don't want it overflowing, but I am stretching, squeezing, pinching in order to move the chocolate that went into the freezer for about five minutes. Now I'm taking the same chocolate. I'm adding a little bit to the candy eyeballs because we want to make them bigger. That is what is going to make these bat pops so adorable. Can you skip this part? You can. Will they be as cute? No, they will not. So it's totally up to you. I did try and do this with um, markers, with edible markers. It doesn't work the same way. So yes, you kind of have to sit with this and do the eyeballs. So if you're making a whole lot at one time, I might split this up into more than one day project, okay? Um, so once we get this done, I just use a toothpick and just kind of move the chocolate around. If your chocolate gets cold, it's going to come out really, really thick. So that means you may need to pop it back in the microwave for another five to eight seconds in order to melt the chocolate back down so that you can move things around a little bit faster. I left it in real time so that you can see how long that took. It's been five minutes and now I'm taking out my molds. So literally just pull them and then they pop right out. No problem, but you wanna make sure they're frozen all the way through. So now we're gonna dip our Oreos. I'm using um, coconut oil. You can use Paramount Crystals or coconut oil. Uh, you could probably use Crisco as well. It just needs to be something that's in a solid form that's going to help thin out this chocolate. If you use something like a vegetable oil or canola oil, you're going to have to pop yourself into the micro into the freezer in order for it to sit. By using something that, using like a grease that is already solid that can melt down, that means that your stuff will set at room temperature because when it's in its natural state, it too is a solid so that's why i went with coconut oil since i was out of paramount crystals and you can find paramount crystals on amazon or once again go to the blog coachchefkim.com and we have links that will take you directly to the ones we were using so i melt my chocolate on 30 second increments this has been about a minute okay and now i'm gonna pop it back in and i'm gonna bring it back out after about 15 seconds so even though it doesn't look like all the chocolate is melted start stirring it and you will notice that the residual heat will start melting things down for you you are gonna have to do this as a labor of love when we overheat the chocolate it will absolutely burn and then there's nothing you can do about it so even though there's a few lumps in it it's still melting the more that I move my spoon throughout. Now, the next thing you're going to see me do is adding just a little bit more coconut oil. The reason for that is that I need this chocolate to be just a little bit thinner while I'm working on these Oreos. I can already tell it's just a little bit too thick for it to fall off of the Oreo the way that I want it to. And I just don't want to have these like overly clumpy Oreos. So I'm just going to add in a little bit more coconut oil. Um, and then I'm going to mix that in. And by that point, we should be ready to go. I do not have to pop it back into the microwave because my coconut oil is just going to melt into the residual heat of the chocolate. Okay. So once we have this part done, uh, make sure you have all your things set up for dipping your sticks into the Oreos as well as having your Oreos ready on hand. Please make sure you have parchment paper or wax paper because once we start this process, it's just gonna keep going.
make sure you get double stuffed Oreos. I have tried this on regular Oreos. It is just not the same. It doesn't come out as well. You have less chance of your Oreo pop breaking if you use double stuffed Oreos. So I'm going to show you three different ways that I've seen people do their Oreo sticks um, or do their Oreo pops. Just so you notice, I am using popsicle sticks for this. If you look at the photos on the blog, I did use a candy stick. Either one works. I feel more secure using the popsicle stick though. So it's kind of up to you whichever one you choose. Just know that if you use the candy stick, um, you're going to let that one sit a little bit longer and just be a little more gentle with it. So you can either just put the stick on with the chocolate and let it melt or you can stick the stick into the chocolate and then into the Oreo or for this one I'm gonna mash it into the cream and then put a top on it I don't really prefer the third way actually my favorite is the second way which you'll see in just a second how I ended up doing all the rest of them the second way so standing the Oreos up like this and then dipping the stick into the chocolate and then over into the Oreo made this so much faster so much easier highly highly recommend the thing you need to remember is that this chocolate needs to sit and make sure that your stick is straight. So I put these on parchment line baking sheets and I let them sit for at least 10 minutes before I started dipping them. Because once you start dipping them, you don't want them to fall off. Will they fall off when you dip into your chocolate? They might. They might. It only happened once while I was doing these. Um, if that happens, particularly if you have kids in the kitchen, we're not scolding our kids. It's kind of funny. It's like, oh my gosh, look what happened. So if you can figure out what happened, I can tell you for a fact, the one that did break on me was the very first one that I did where I just like put it in the chocolate and then put it in between the cream and the cookie. I don't really like that method. So um I did test out all three that I've seen out on the internet and the second one works. Now, for this, I am putting my eyes on while these are wet. Okay, like I just dipped them and now my eyes are going on, the ears are going to go on too. But then in just a moment, you're also going to see it after it's set a little bit more. The reason I did it two different ways is because when you're working with kids in the kitchen, you never know how much time you're going to have. And so I was testing it out to see what would happen if you have older kids and they are doing this immediately. So we dip into our chocolate, we add our ears on, and these are just heart sprinkles like from a Valentine's Day collection. Um, which is really cool because if you go to craft stores, they actually have some Christmas and Valentine's stuff still in there are already out so i just use upside down hearts for the ears um and then the eyes that we made earlier as well as the wings you're also going to notice that you see how that bat wing is just one wing yeah i don't use the whole thing so we're gonna cut it and then we're gonna slide the wings into the sides of the oreo now on the mold that i was using there were larger wings and there were smaller wings um, I think this is going to be a personal preference on um, which one you like. I ended up liking the larger wing more than the smaller wing. So remember, for this one, we are doing everything immediately. It's all still very wet, which means you have more chance of messing it up. I'm going to just throw it out there. You have a bigger chance of messing it up, particularly if you're working with kids. Now, this one I let sit long enough that I could pick that straight up off the thing and no chocolate was coming off, right? So this has sat probably for about five minutes. And now the chocolate is almost set, it's still soft and I can just drop things on it. So do not, I repeat, do not push your eyes into the chocolate. Do not push them into the chocolate. You can set them on the chocolate, but don't push them into the chocolate because you're going to move all the chocolate around it. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to cut the little wings off the bat. Make sure you save the middle part. You can melt it back down if you need more chocolate later. Um, then these are just going to slide into the side. If you waited until the very end to do this, it will take you longer. So if you're doing these in bulk, just know that if you have to come back and glue on eyes and glue on wings it's going to take forever so now we've got the things for our cauldrons also on the website also in the ebook 
You can get it from codechefkim.com backslash spooky, and you can download the ebook for free, which will have all the things in it. For our cauldrons, I outlined it, I outlined it first, and then I started adding on my eyes. There's no rhyme or reason for this. It's a cauldron, right? So just have like your bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Throw some sprinkles on the top. Add an eyeball if you want to. Kids get a kick out of this part. It's super fun. You can use regular size eyeballs or large eyeballs. If you use the large ones, you're only going to need one for these. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to make a mouth on it because I thought that was fun. So to make a mouth, literally, it looks like a heart, right? So it's just boom, boom. That's it. One, two. That's all. Okay, not a whole lot of squeezing, not a whole lot of work. One, two, boom, they're done. So as we finish her off, I decided she needed fangs. So you're just going to do two little dots. One, two, there you go. Isn't that adorable? I kind of love it. Well, I hope you enjoyed making these with me today. I hope that you and your kids have an absolute blast this weekend. Remember, we'll be back next Friday sharing more delicious treats, more desserts, and we'll be here with all the fun.